Hey, good afternoon. Um, uh, as, as Ken said, um, we are getting ready to head into the Big Ten tournament. Um, we finished the season tied for fourth. Uh, Minnesota wins a tiebreaker. Not that it matters because four plays five. So, um, and uh, we will play the first game of the day. Um, starts at 10.30 Eastern time, 9.30 Central time um, against Minnesota, um, one of the teams that we lost to in the regular season. Um, I think we're excited to get started in the Big Ten tournament. Um, the Big Ten season was a little bit up and down for us with injuries. Um, rarely did we have the same starting lineup. Um, and certainly against Minnesota in our first game, um, we were without uh, Shayla Mutz. Um, who has really been sort of the heart and soul um, getting her back on the field the last couple of weeks has certainly made a difference. Um, you can probably look at our goal total and, and see that something's changed in the last week and a half, and, and Shayla certainly has been a, a big part of that. Um, Nicole Brees also wasn't on the field with us. Um, she was out with a concussion when we played Minnesota up there. So we're excited to have our full team back and, and take Minnesota on to, to start the, the Big Ten tournament. Um, we just came off a great win at Michigan. Um, I've been told, I didn't even realize this, it was our first win ever in Ann Arbor um, since the start of the program, uh, which I think um, says a lot about this team. Um, they certainly want to do things that no team is, has done here at Illinois, and uh, Saturday they accomplished that. An, a, an incredible come from behind victory. Um, we played some great soccer, um, gave up a couple of goals that um, the lights there are a little bit tough. It's sort of like looking up into these lights, and our goalkeeper lost one in the lights, and um, we gave up a, a couple of goals, and we're down 2 nothing um, shortly into the second half. And... You know, this team showed some resolve that they've sort of, I think, garnered over the season with some of the games they've played and been in and um, scored a goal with about 27 minutes left, kept fighting. Um, we moved some things around, pushed some numbers forward, and, and scored our second goal with about seven minutes left. And uh, then Nicole Brees, as she does so well, gets into the box in overtime, um, takes a defender on, beats the defender, and uh, in her effort to try and stop her from shooting, fouls her, and we get a PK. And... Um, Vanessa DiBernardo um, converts the PK and, and we get, come out of uh, Ann Arbor with our first win ever in program history. So we're certainly going into the Big Ten tournament with some confidence um, that we can win on the road, some confidence that we can score some goals. We've scored seven goals in the last two games um, and I think we've scored 18 all year long. So certainly hitting our stride at the right time as we head into the tournament. How do you account for the scoring surge? Um, a couple things, I think. We've changed our formation. Once we got everybody healthy, we were sort of able to move some players around and, and put people in, in places that helps us. Um, Shayla Mutz getting on the field helps us. But having Shayla and Nicole Brees back means that uh, we can play Amy Fair in the back, which puts a Lena in the midfield. And this is the end of a chain of events that allows us to put Vanessa DiBernardo up front and closer to the goal. And I think a combination of all of those things certainly has added to uh, us being more dangerous. Um, when you get Vanessa closer to the goal and she dra draws a lot of attention, um, other people are even open to score. So I think us having a full complement of players has really allowed us to, to move things around, keep people in scoring positions, and, and find the back of the net. And, and it's like anything. Once you start getting some confidence there, then the players scoring goals have some confidence. Nikki Reed's scored her first two goals of the season in the last two games. So with being healthy, this is more of a natural formation for all these players playing in the positions that they're comfortable in? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I don't think, again, we still have a couple of kids out. But I don't know that this would have been the formation we would have played at the, the very beginning of the season, um, especially we have a freshman now who's playing in our, our back line um, that we didn't start that way, but she got some experience playing in other places that we now feel comfortable putting in the back line. So it's been an evolution for us to get to this system and, and get these people in these places. But I think right now with the personnel we have, it's the most effective, and it's certainly proving, um, proving that at this point. Does last year play any role, then have any carryover? Into I think it does in the sense that we've got quite a few players that experience that. And, you know, it was a, a tough Big Ten tournament with overtimes and penalty kicks. And, and if you look at the Big Ten season, it was tight all the way um, all the way through, you know, the seeds weren't even decided until this weekend's games. And having players who have been in that and had that tournament experience certainly carries over. Um, the games and who you're playing and, and how those teams will shake out doesn't really carry over. But the experience you garner, one of the reasons I fought really hard to get the Big Ten tournament back, and last year was the first year we'd had it in a long time, is because that tournament experience is invaluable. It's invaluable for the tournament now. It's invaluable for NCAA tournament. And, uh, you know, we've got players now that have that experience, and, and that certainly, I think, will help us going forward. Do you do anything unusual to be ready for a 9.30 a.m. start? Um, 
Well, we actually, um, just for uh, for that reason, got the team up this morning, um, and we met in our team locker room and did some stuff. Um, you know, we were, drove back on Sunday, um, and so we planned, and we got up this morning at 7, um, which is about the time we'll be eating breakfast, even that. Um, and so certainly we're doing things, and we've talked about that and, and talked to them about go ahead and getting up early tomorrow morning as well um, before we leave. So we're starting to try to get our body on that time frame. Um, you know, I told them they at least had to be as, as awake as they are in their classes, and, and hopefully more so. Um, and it's supposed to be pretty cold, so I don't think waking up will be <laughs> um, too much of a, a problem. But certainly it is unusual for us to play at that time in the morning. Um, but it's unusual for Minnesota. And, and so, like everything, um, you have to deal with it better than your opponent, I think. What have you been telling your younger players in preparation for a tournament where you play games in as many days consecutively? Well, the, the funny thing about the freshmen is they're used to playing in tournaments where they play five or six games in a weekend. And uh, it's not the same intensity. Um, and they won't realize it probably until Sunday how much harder it is to play three games in five days at the college level. Um, but it certainly isn't something that they're fearful of because they're used to playing a lot of games in a lot of days. So and I think our upperclassmen are really good at talking to the players about how important it is. And we've done this all season long to take care of their bodies and all of the recovery stuff we've done all year long is to help us prepare for this type of, of an event um, and also just to prepare for um, anytime you get into postseason play it's about recovering from one game shaking it off getting rid of it no matter how well you played and getting ready for the next one and we've had a lot of practice in terms of doing that over the last four months Having the ability to come from behind the way you guys did the last game, how do you use that heading to the tournament? Uh, like I said, I think the last two games, um, the Nebraska game, you know, where we really solved, you know, they created some odd chances and we solved that. Um, Michigan, again, we, we solved um, some things. Um, and, and I think that's what's been really good about this team was we took um, the input that we gave them at halftime against Michigan and were able to put into that, that into play. Um, you know, we gave up a fluky goal right at the beginning of the half, but it didn't um, rattled us um, and tactically we really went out and solved it and two of the goals we scored were exactly sort of the same way we had drawn it up sort of in the locker room at halftime same thing with the Nebraska game you know we said hey their goalkeepers playing high let's do x y and z and Nikki you do this and Vanessa you do that and next thing you know balls in the back of the net twice so this team has really I think started to believe in themselves and their ability to solve whatever another team throws at them and we'll certainly go into the Big Ten tournament with that confidence. Thank you guys.